All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days and buried treasure. When last we left our friends, Captain Dalton, Johnny, and Sue, and First Mate Wainwright, they had just released old Dickon, who had been trussed up by Red Mulhooly, and Ezekiel Kipp, who are trying to keep Ezra Grange and Johnny, the rightful owners, from taking possession of the mineral deposit on the island of Galto. After releasing Dickon, the party was too late to return to their boat, as old Smoky Mouth, the volcano which had been threatening all evening, began to erupt, throwing spurts of flame around the island side. Safety was found in an old cave at the base of the mountain where we find our friends now. Thank you, lucky compass. I saw this cave as we were sneaking up on the cabin. Aye, Captain Dalton, you may later that. But it's a dingy old hole. It makes me feel funny like to be in it. Ah! Any part in the storm? Ah! Right you off, Polly. We ain't been here long enough till our safe aboard this here cave is. I think it'll be safe enough, Dickon. You, Sue, and Johnny, stand away from that entrance. Don't tell them how close those ashes will come. We'll be careful, Captain Dalton. I was just trying to see what became of Red Mulhooly. If there's light as day from the flames of Smoky Mouth. Well, I'm not worrying about Mulhooly. I was thinking about that old man that Red knocked down and left lying up there on that cliff behind the cabin. You're right, Johnny. He's in the open with no protection from the ashes of the volcano. A vast Wainwright. You know I never gave that a thought. He's an old buzzard, Ezekiel Kip. But I don't like to see a helpless old man in danger, a buzzard or no. And neither do I, Captain Dalton. Can we do anything to help him? There he is, Captain Dalton, running across that clearing. Who, oh, the old man? No, Red Mulhooly. Yes, I see him. He's running toward the cabin. And will you look at the ashes falling all around him? Blimey, this, this, this here is no night for man or beast. Ah, no night for man or beast. Ah! In time of danger, when a man's life's at stake, be friend or enemy, it gives you a peculiar feeling to stand by helpless like and be able to do nothing for the poor rascal. Aye, that's what makes you the man you are, Captain Dalton. Blast me kisses if it don't. Is there nothing we can do at all, Captain Dalton, to save old man Kip anyway? I'm afraid not, lad. If I thought there was one chance in a million of getting him through that smoke and ash, I believe I'd risk the try. If anyone goes for the old sea moose, it'll be me, Roy. Look, Mulhooly's made the cabin. Here he is standing in front of the door. Oh, those red cinders just missed him. Mulhooly! Red Mulhooly! Captain Dalton is calling to Mulhooly. I wonder why. I don't know. Let's wait and see. Alas! Mulhooly! Who's there? Who's your calling? Mulhooly, this is Captain Dalton. Can you see me? Blimey, Captain Dalton. We can see him by the light of old Smoky Mouth. But he can't see us. It's too dark where we are. You're right, Dickon. Mulhooly, can you tell which direction my voice is coming from? Yeah, I'm looking that way. What about it? Simmer it down, you slammy wharf rat. Captain Dalton's trying to help you. No, you don't. It's a trick. But you don't fool me. You're trying to capture me, Blaster. Well, stay down there, you lop-eared buzzard. You think it'd be safer there than up here, even if we ought to skin your hulk. You know, Sue, in spite of what Red Mulhooly has done to us, I feel sorry for him now, just like Captain Dalton said. Yes, Captain Dalton was right, all right. See, I wouldn't like to be where Mulhooly is now with all that fire and fork falling all around him. Look. He's gone inside the cabin. Well, there's no use wasting our breath on Mulhooly. He'd rather take a chance inside the cabin than be captured by us, I guess. Oh, Captain Dalton, look. What's up, lad? The cabin, where Mulhooly went into. What about it, Neoty? It's still there. Yes, but didn't you see those sparks fly on the roof of the cabin? Well, maybe they'll die out. Oh, I'm afraid not. From the looks of things, it hasn't rained in days around these parts. And that dry straw patch on the roof will catch fire in the blink of an eye. Capsize me mess. It has caught a blaze. Look. Oh, you'll be caught. Yes, it sure is burning fast. Mulhooly, come outside. The cabin's on fire. It's a trick. You won't get me outside. All right, you blithering idiot. Find out for yourself. There goes the cabin. The whole thing's a flame. Mulhooly, you'd better get out of there. I'm trying to. Something's holding the door. It won't budge. Help. Help. I can't get out. Help. Poor lover. No one deserves an end like that, no matter how bad they are. Ah, oh, man, the pot makes me spread a leak. Ah! It's only set in wood spring, a leak. A little water will do a lot of good right now. The best. The cabin's caving in. Good Lord. Uh, uh. Uh, Mr. Nicholson. Aye, uh, Mr. Grange. Nicholson, we've got to do something. My sister and the rest on that volcanic island. We've got to get them off. Take it easy, Mr. Grange. There's nothing we can do about it right now. The hot cinders that volcano is throwing out won't permit us getting any closer to land. I'll never forgive myself for this. We never should have come on this trip. I wouldn't say that, sir. The chance for a treasure is hard to pass up. All the money in the world is not worth this. 
Oh, if only we could get through to them. All this threatened may be for naught, Mr. Grange. I have an idea Dalton has found a shelter for the lot of them till this fiery squall blows over. Eh, Buscetta? Hey, Mr. Nicholson. This is not first time I have seen Captain Dalton face danger. But always he sailed through the gale with upright mast. The captain, he is very brave sailor. Well, that may be true on board ship, but he's not on board ship right this moment. That is very true, Mr. Grange, but all the better. On land, if one place catch fire, move to other place. On shipboard, ship catch fire, no place else to go. <laughs> that is pretty good, eh? Buscara, I don't care for your humor at a time like this. Now, Mr. Grange, I think Buscara and his crude way was merely trying to cheer you a bit. Yes, I, I'm sorry, Buscara. These nerves of mine are too much for me. Nicholson, I, I feel so helpless. What can we do? What can we do, man? I think we do something pretty quick now. Why, what do you mean? Wind coming up. I think maybe gale to port side. Oh, so much the worse. The wind will whip that island into a howling furnace. No, Buscara think not. Tonight and very soon it will rain. This is time of year in these parts for squall. Uh, that would be good fortune. By the gods, man, I think you're right. A drop struck my face. Or, or am I just imagining it? No, I felt it too. Buscara ply these waters many times. Buscara knows. Soon you will see. Buscara, you're a prophet. Aye, you're right there, Mr. Grange. Here it comes. Buscara, I repeat, you're a prophet and a mighty good one at that. No, Buscara, no prophet. Buscara, just good sailor. Look at that rain come down. Home it down, it's coming in sheets. Yes, look, already the flames on the island seem to be subsiding. The rumbling of Smoky Mouth doesn't seem as loud either. Nicholson, make ready to lower away in the boats. We're going back to the island. Aye, aye, sir. Let's get her. All hands on deck. We're headed for port. Aye, aye, sir. All hands on deck. Man the boat. All hands on deck. Man the boat. Avast, me hearties. It's growing darker outside the cave. I believe the rain has cooled old Smoky Mouth off a bit. Ah! To the oars, men! There's a low! Ah! Man, I'm mighty thankful to see it, Polly. Too bad it didn't come a little sooner. Hi, Mr. Wainwright. If it had, we'd still have those two wolf for us to contend with. Yes. It's getting pretty dark now. I've noticed the rumblings about let up. Perhaps the danger has passed. Can we leave the cave now, Captain Dalton? I think we'd better wait just a little longer, just to make sure. Poor brother Ed will be sick worrying about it, I know. I know, but he's waited this long. He can wait a little longer. I'm going to be certain the danger's really passed. Right you are, Roy. But with the rain coming down as it has for the past few minutes, I think we're pretty safe. Oh, what was that? Someone fired a shot. I'm asked there. Who's that blasting away? <laughs> Ah, 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 
We'll help you build another one if you'll only be reasonable. Now, now you don't. Now you don't. No use trying to get on my good side. I've got the bead on you. Now get off my island. It's mine. And see, you here. I've come after my treasure. Who said that? Whose voice was that? Mine, Johnny Robbins. You stole this treasure from my father. Robbins? Robbins? You're a ghost. You're a ghost. Now, Johnny, don't get him excited. He's liable to start a shooting again. But Captain Dalton, he's not going to chase us off this island. He has no right to. Johnny's right, Captain Dalton. I know, but we've got to handle this old man the right way. He has the drop on us. We can see him way back there in the tunnel of his cave. Hurry up now. Get off. Get off. I'm going to count three. And if you're knocked on your way by then, I'll start shooting again. And this time, I won't miss. Oh, Captain, don't me mean this. One. I'm afraid he does. Wait till he counts two, then everybody drop their stomachs on the floor of the cave. Two. Now, everybody down. Three. <laughs> Say, old Kip meant business that time. I wonder if Johnny and Sue and all the rest dropped in time before he shot. And what about Grange and the crew that were making ready to return to the island? Will they get there in time to save our friends from harm at the hands of the madman Ezekiel Kip? Well, there's only one way to find out. Be sure to listen to the next exciting adventure of Johnny, Sue, Captain Dalton, and all the rest of the crew on the cruise of the Paul Parrot. This is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, speaking and saying for now... Goodbye.